Hey everyone, I am coming to show you how I stack fireworks and hello wishes. Let me get to the right folder. So we're going to um, work on this shot right here from a couple nights ago. I'm going to show you how I processed and stacked my fireworks shot in order to get this particular um, shot as my final product. So. In Lightroom, I have processed the original fireworks shot. This is um, 21 seconds at an F20 ISO 100 on the Tokina 1116 from the Wedding Pavilion. This was the final, let me double check, no, this was the first set of perimeter fireworks from the Hallow Wishes show. So after the Hallow Wishes show was over, I left my camera set up and I took, I let it do its thing to get sharp. I took my, um, my end brackets to get um, an, a shot for an overlay. So, and actually I see a couple of spots I'm gonna clean up real quick. This Tokina of mine has um, been giving me some issues with flare. Yes, I know my last video, I got several comments about this little button, if you will, down here, visualize spots. If we click it, you'll be able to see all the little spots. The problem is some of these little dots, well, these are stars, so I don't want to remove them. Um, but I believe that's pretty much it. Let me double check. Yeah, that's fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this shot and I'm going to take the original um, perimeter shot. I'm going to right click, edit in, Photoshop. Now, I always keep Photoshop open. That way, when I'm working in Lightroom, it makes the transition from Lightroom to Photoshop much quicker. So, now we are moving the files from Lightroom to Photoshop. So, I can show you how I stack them. There are a couple of different ways to do this, but because I am working with raw files and I want my files to go back into um, Lightroom after I'm done so I can continue working on them, I'm going to show you the method I use. Now, if it was a completed file and JPEG and I was done processing and I knew I wasn't gonna do anything else, then I would do it a little differently, but not, I, I guess really not too terribly different, but enough to, to make my workflow uh, more difficult. So, both files are now open. In Photoshop, I am going to take my background file Actually, I'm gonna do this opposite this time. So the perimeter fireworks, control A, control C, and it's going to copy. And I'm gonna head over here. I'm gonna make a duplicate by clicking, dragging down to my layer button, and I'm gonna hit control V. And now I have my perimeter shot and the background shot, and my computer's gonna lag before it shows it because, you know, it's, not old, but it's just really full. <laughs> so, okay, I'm gonna select both of those layers over in this right-hand side, holding my control or my shift key down and clicking on them. Now I'm going to right-click on them, and I'm gonna come over here to the menu, and I'm gonna convert this to a smart object. That's it. Now this takes a second while it does its thing and it's thinking. Okay, so now we have our smart object right here where both of those layers are now converted together. Doesn't look any different, but that's only because we haven't adjusted to see everything within this one layer. So we're gonna go up here to layer. We're going to click on smart objects, stack mode, and we are going to select maximum because it really is this easy. And voila, both of those photos have been stacked together where the maximum light values are being shown through. So now I'm gonna take it back into Lightroom. I know a lot of, um, a lot of other photographers were continue, would continue at this point utilizing the different tools in Photoshop, but I'm not going to today. I could apply some image gnomics to it, the noise wear. I could apply some topaz sharpening, but I'm not. I'm just gonna hit Control S so it's saving, 
and I'm going to head right on back to, we're at 96, come on, 97, 98, 99, you can do it. And I'm going to head right on back over here to Lightroom. And you'll see that I now have my image put together. It's been brought into Lightroom as a TIFF. And if I want to make any adjustments here, I can. Bump up the clarity just a little. I'll take maybe some of the highlights down. Bring my blacks down. I'm going to bring up my whites just a bit. I am. No, I'm okay with the color. I'm going to bring up the contrast. Now, if I bring up the contrast too much, it doesn't look good. I'm going to bring that down. But I'd like to show you what happens when I bring up the whites. I can see more stars, but it really destroys the rest of the shot. So I'm going to bring that up just enough to where it doesn't destroy the shot. And I'm going to bring the vibrance up. But I'm going to bring the saturation down. Okay, I'm going to go in here. Right about 80. Detail. I'm going to do about a 1, 1.234. 3, okay. Holding my Alt key down, I am going to drag over the masking bar just so the area that I want sharp is actually selected. And then I'm going to apply a little bit of luminance. I usually fall in the 7 to 13 range. I'm going to stick at about 13. And I don't need any of that right now. All right, so now I'm going to come over here to the brush tool. I'm going to bring up the exposure for about 23, the shadows to about 10. And I'm going to brighten up these bushes just a bit because they really look drab. Just so you can see where I, right through there. Bring up the shadows just a little bit more. Go bring those highlights down just a smidge. Okay, and there I'm done. So now I would export, but this is currently set for Haunted Mansion, so let's do this. And we'll do it by itself. 3,000 watermarked, done. It's going to export. And I put this in a new folder. It's gonna be over here. And this is the final product from today's stack. So there you go. That's how I stack firework photos to make sure I have a properly exposed foreground and fireworks in the background. Sometimes I stack multiple firework shots. Sometimes it's just a foreground and a firework shot. I know there are other photographers that want to walk you through how to mask this and mask that. That's a lot of work and not gonna lie, I'm kinda lazy. So <laughs> I try to do it in the easiest possible way and this is what I do. So any questions, feel free to head on over to the Disney Photography Facebook group and ask away. Not only will you have myself who will answer, but several other photographers who are much more talented in Photoshop and Lightroom who will also be able to assist you with any of your questions. Have a great day.